Wondering when the Republicans in my beloved Tennessee would up the crazy ante, raise the stupidity stakes, and now they have. They've got a bill which would effectively remove a minimum age requirement for marriage in the state. So who had child brides on their conservative end times bingo cards, huh? Yeah, I wonder what they workshop before this. They get together behind closed doors trying to figure out what the most baldly hypocritical thing that they, the party of family values, could do would be like, what did they pitch before this? Some guy's like, hey, I was thinking we make it illegal for dads to hug their gay kids in public just so other people don't accidentally catch the gay, you know. Like, yeah, that's not bad, but we need something bigger. Well, Trey Crowder caught the attention of Queer News Tonight when he was booked for a performance at Sunshine Cathedral Performing Arts Center on Saturday, January 28th at 7 p.m. His comedy performance promises to be something unique and hilarious as he comes to very queer South Florida. Trey Crowder, welcome uh, to Queer News Tonight. We're thrilled to have you. Hey, Al, yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. I love your accent. Now let's get it right off, mm -hmm. uh, right off the hook. Liberal, redneck, straight, queer, church, agnostic, married, with children. Did I get all of those phrases? I didn't say they were all about you, but in performing right. at Sunshine Cathedral, did I get all of those right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I mean, again, some of them apply to me. Some of them apply to the church. I am agnostic. I am married with children. I don't even remember. I'm straight. Church is queer. I love queer people. Uh, what else do we got? Liberal redneck. That's my whole thing. Oh, I think, okay. yeah, I think the bases are covered. Yeah, the bases are covered. Now I'm making sure just one more time. I heard you say it, but I just want to make sure, uh, that I say it. Uh, Sunshine Cathedral is a queer church. It's the world's largest queer church. And yes. the agnostic straight comedian who is a redneck yeah. is coming in right. to do a, comedy. Uh, evidently, you need to talk to, to them about that. I because I sort of like to <laughs> I'm a long time ally and I've got a lot of gay fans and stuff like that. That part's not at all weird to me. None of it's weird to me. I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be fun. But like it's when I found out it was a church specifically yeah, I was like, oh, well, that's new and interesting. I've, <laughs> I've never been booked at any kind of church before because exactly. I'm a bit of a godless heathen. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> a godless heathen. Well, you, uh, uh, you and Reverend uh, Dr. Darrell Watkins are going to get along famously then. Um, I want to explore a little bit because, um, I'm, of course, I knew uh, of you and I've seen many of your YouTube uh uh, uh, videos that you have online. Uh, you're from rural Tennessee. Uh, mm -hmm. I understood somewhere near uh, the Kentucky border. Tennessee's not that great for LGBT. Kentucky's definitely not that great for LGBT. Uh, and not so great for liberals either. Uh, where you're from is not Nashville. And I believe that that's the only place in the state of Tennessee. How did you get to be so liberal? Well, the thing that I've always attributed it to primarily is the fact that I was raised by a single father. My dad had one sibling, his younger brother, my Uncle Tim, and my Uncle Tim is a gay man openly. And so I think that contributed to my family in general, my dad in particular, and then ultimately me all being much more open minded. And also, and I'm sorry to keep bringing churches up, but <laughs> that also kept us out of the church because the churches where i was from are very different than the church in fort lauderdale that we're talking about today especially where gay people were concerned so we didn't go to church and we didn't get indoctrinated in a lot of that southern baptist type stuff and you know we loved uncle tim and i think it just led to being generally more open-minded which then you know you start pulling on that thread and it uh, unravels all the other stuff too i didn't like the iraq war i grew up poor i don't like you know, I'm all, I'm all eat the rich, you know, <laughs> that type of thing. So, I mean, I've got pretty much all of it going on. You know, I, uh, I, I feel like I have so much in common uh, with you. Grew up in a uh, person of faith, grew up in the Southern Baptist Church. Uh, I'm from uh, Southwest Virginia uh, and my family and everything that you just said rings completely, uh, completely true. I'm, I'm curious, as I say, I'm from Southwest uh, Virginia. For much of my life, my accent frequently equated me as being dumb here in Florida. So I would speak the way, <laughs> my accent's not as heavy as yours, but uh, it, it, uh, uh, growing up in school, it's like, oh no, you're wearing shoes. That doesn't make sense uh, with your accent and, and you're probably pretty dumb. 
now, as I'm reading details about you, um, uh, I live in Florida. We're very purple here in Florida, maybe even red uh, now. Uh, but you live in Los Angeles. How does your accent mm -hmm. work for you in Los Angeles? Oh, I mean, it's of note for sure. Like, it, I think a lot of people are generally alarmed by it. Or, you know, I'm, they're like, who's somebody playing a racist banjo in here? What is that? It's weird. Like, no one expects it. Uh, but, but I don't, I feel like the most common response I get, well, either a lot of people are just very complimentary. They're like, oh, I love that accent or whatever. But a whole lot of people ask, and I've always thought this was weird. They're like, is there, I love that accent as long as it's real. Like, is that real? But they people think that I'm faking it, which like, what an accent to fake, you know? Like I would get Australian or English or something, but why would I fake this accent? Like, yeah, yeah. I want everybody to think I hate math, you know? Like I don't, doesn't make any sense to me, but uh, yeah. So people are just kind of like perplexed by it more than anything, perplexed. especially cause like, the, yeah, the glasses and the haircut and all that stuff, none of it. That's so I can pass with my mouth shut, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. I, but uh, I'm sorry. So, go yeah. ahead. No, no, go ahead. I, I, no, yeah. I just. I, I, it, that's it. We got it. Yeah. You're good. All go right. ahead. All right. <laughs> uh, sorry, we're in uh, a little bit of a delay. Um, uh, I also have been fascinated and looking forward to talking to you because, as I said, uh, you and I have a lot of things in common, and one of the things that I found out that you and I have in common is that you're a news guy. And that was very exciting to me as, as a lead anchor uh, at uh, the, the largest queer news show in the world. I read that you had a gig at the New York Daily News called Hillbilly yeah. in Chief reporting uh, politically <laughs> oriented video. Tell me about that experience, especially with the New York Post. Well, it was the New York Daily News, but oh, yeah, the Daily I mean, News still. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, right after I first went viral in 2016, that was honestly one of the first things that came up. Uh, Jim Rich, I believe it was, was in charge at the time, saw the videos and like had the idea for me to do a little video series, like a one per week based on, on one video a week based on a particular news story that they would suggest to me. Usually it was something that was like either redneck or Southern adjacent. Like I remember I did one about when Kentucky opened that, big um that big arc noah's ark museum like i did a video for them covering that and uh yeah they were very similar to the videos that i do on my own page except i would do characters and stuff for those i tried to switch it up a little bit but i didn't that came completely out of nowhere i loved doing it uh but that whole regime got uh replaced i'm not saying it was my fault but it could have been you know it's hard to say <laughs> but but you know it seems i had some dubious uh decision making skills since they were giving me stuff to do but uh yeah they the new regime came in so they you know that ended my time making those videos for the new york daily news but i had a lot of fun doing it and they're all i think still up like it's you can find online. them if you google yes, google my name and uh daily news and yeah i think they're pretty good they're pretty funny yeah, i think they yeah. turned out pretty well. i i think it's uh hilarious and the fact that uh the new york daily news would embrace uh your kind of uh humor and and your kind of voice and where you're from at the time that it, it was going on uh, is super interesting to me. I want to talk a moment uh, about uh, what uh, is going to happen uh, here in South Florida when you come in. You're on a national tour. Uh, you're going to lots of cities. In addition to Fort Lauderdale in Florida, you're coming to Tampa and to Orlando and, uh, and to audience here in Florida and around the country. Make sure you uh, go to TreyCrowder.com uh, and look at all of the gig dates uh, that uh, he is doing. I'm curious, what do you expect uh, from a gay audience when you're in Fort Lauderdale and uh, what should the gay audience expect from you? What, what, what can we expect? I've always gotten along very well uh, with my gay audience members and gay fans. I don't do, um, you know, it'll, it'll come up at least a little bit. I feel like I sort of run the game. I feel like if you watch my videos and you like them, you're going to not be surprised or feel betrayed or anything by the type of comedy that I do, but it's a little more uh, evergreen sort of like the videos I do are very topical and specific. And on stage, I talk about the same general themes and whatnot, making fun of crazy conservatives and that sort of thing, uh, but in more general terms. So 
I think we'll have a good time. You're certainly not uh, going to, you know, I don't think going to have anything to take issue with. Uh, and every now and then I'll have some bits that sort of touch on LGBTQ stuff. But, yeah, I'm, you know, we'll see. And even if we do have some uh, things to take uh a uh, bit of uh, observation on, um, bring it on. We hope to hear it. Um, Trey, I have to give you a little warning though, uh, before your January 28th um, uh, gig here in uh, Fort Lauderdale at uh, Sunshine Cathedral uh, Performing Arts Center. I don't know if you have heard the news, uh, but in Florida, uh, we have a governor named Ron DeSantis. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're preparing for our governor, Ron DeSantis, right? Yeah, I think he'll probably come up at least a little bit at the beginning. I'll probably go after him uh, somewhat because he makes an easy target. But I mean, he, you know, he's also abjectly terrifying. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. not I'm not looking forward to his career trajectory. And I thank Florida for unleashing him onto the world. But listen, yeah. I can't say too much. I'm from Tennessee. Yeah. We're pretty bad, too. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say uh, Tennessee and yeah. Florida and Texas. Uh, the three of us are just yeah. battling it out on who can be the worst. It's true. Uh, don't you think? I think uh, Florida perhaps right now is in the lead because we have handed off from Donald Trump in Palm Beach to Ron DeSantis in Tallahassee. So I, I think we might be beating Tennessee. I think. I think you're. I mean, look, I'll gladly let you have that particular belt. Uh, you know, I'm not going to fight you over that trophy. But I, but <laughs> being objective about it, I think, yeah, probably. It, it seems like it's mostly between Florida and Texas most of the time. Yeah, but Tennessee yeah. tries to sneak in there with their yeah. own uh, stupidity, you know, yeah, every now and then. Yeah. Well, Tennessee's got a little brother syndrome thing going on. Yeah, Florida, that's Texas. exactly it. You know, as, <laughs> as much as I want to hate on uh, Tennessee, uh, Tennessee always gets a pass in the LGBTQ community, and that is because you have Nashville, and we love Nashville. But more importantly, you've got Dolly Parton, and, and she's the patron saint of the LGBTQ community. So she says, please yeah. forgive them. They have sinned, but I live here. Uh, so we right. give a pass to Tennessee. I yeah, and I think we've earned that pass just because yeah. of Dolly. I knew as soon as you started that sentence where it was going. Where it was going to go? Know, Did is, I tell her that? She is the, well, you know, no, I mean, deservedly so. She is the queen and the yeah. saint and all that. That's I agree with saint. you. So, yeah, love Dolly. I, I, I want to I talk about, uh, for just a moment, another uh, icon for me, uh, just a personal icon, and that's Bill Maher. And, and I was reading uh, about you, and if there is an anti-Bill Maher in the world, it would be a guest described as redneck. Now, now, seriously, I, I, he just almost walks on water for me in terms of what he, he does on his show. You've had three appearances on Real Time. Please, just for me, tell me what that experience was like, uh, working and, and sitting with Bill Maher in those shows. Well, I mean, the first time was absolutely insane because the first time I went on there was the Friday following the presidential election in 2016. So it was like three days after Donald Trump had shocked the world, basically. And going on that show in particular on that night was wild. I mean, it's honestly like a blur because it was such a surreal experience because also part of the way Bill does it and they tell you this beforehand, they're like, you're the first time you're going to meet him is when you walk on stage to do your thing. Uh, so that was my experience. I walk out there, sit down by John Legend, David Axelrod's across from me. <clears throat> and, you know, and it was just, it was so crazy because I'm a big fan too. I've been watching that show for years, you know, and you kind of, you, it feels like it goes by in an instant, at least for me, you know, yeah. like, and, and again, looking back on it, it feels almost kind of like a dream or something. Then, you know, then the next, the f subsequent two times, it's not as novel, so you settle in a little more, but it's still pretty wild. The third time I was on there, I don't know if it's me. I don't know what's going on here, but the third time I was on there, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg died while we were live on the air. Oh, and dear. it was and it was announced oh, live. Dear. Yeah. So it's so it's like two out of the three times have been really noteworthy, you know, episodes for various reasons. So I mean, yeah, it's been pretty intense for sure. True, did, but did great. You? I love it. Did you make any connections that the possibility of you appearing on Bill Maher brings on terrible national news, the election of Donald Trump and the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Is there any possibility yeah, I mean, that that might I, be? Yeah, I guess I'm just cursed by the units of the universe pushing back on everything uh, that I represent, uh, I guess. Uh, I don't uh, know, but... <laughs> 
He's he's a hero, uh, and uh, the the fact that uh, you've made these three appearances, I think, is just fantastic uh, in terms of your representation. Let me come back to this national tour. Um, uh, as I uh, say to audience, all of these dates can be seen at TreyCrowder.com, uh, and uh, we're putting up all of uh, Trey's social media right now, uh, so you can find out how to do that. I'm curious in doing this, uh, sitting in Los Angeles. Do you like touring? Is this the uh, the all of the gigs uh, that you've done in various different ways? Is touring one of the things you really like to do? Yeah, I mean, I love it. I'm I'm married. I have two children, so I have to balance like not being gone all the time, especially the way musicians are. But I'm lucky like that. I can fly out for a couple of days and then come back. I don't have to be gone for stretches at a time. So that sort of that sort of mitigates that part for me. And outside of that, I absolutely love it because I consider myself a I was a stand-up comedian for six years before I started making those videos or anything. I consider myself primarily a comedian. And to me, if you're a comedian, this is the job, you know, touring, being on the road and doing it. That's what it's all about. And I just, you know, I enjoy it. I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, the, all my, my crowds are great. The You know, everybody loves them. The staff at the venues always love them. And uh, they make it easy on me. So, it's yeah, it's a great time. I love doing it. Well, as I, I said in the introduction, uh, the seeming contradictions here make uh, this a not-to-miss moment on January 28th uh, for your 7 p.m. Con uh, uh, your 7 p.m. performance. Agnostic, redneck, uh, southerner with this accent, liberal, uh, in a church, uh, in a queer church, uh, married uh, with children, just seems to me uh, it has all of the all of the makings of being a great evening in Fort Lauderdale at Sunshine uh, Performing Arts Center. I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a good time, and I'm just I'm going to be glad to be in Southern Florida in late January instead of you know Minneapolis, where I'll be two weeks after that. Look, yeah, I love Minneapolis. Looking forward to seeing them too. But yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm yeah, not used we, to that. I'm from we, the south. I live yeah, in LA. I don't. Yeah. I, <laughs> we know what you're saying. I don't want to It'll freeze. probably be about 80 degrees here. Uh, uh, I love uh, it. To all of our audience, again, you don't want to miss uh, Trey Crowder Saturday, January 28th at 7 p.m. at Sunshine Cathedral Performing Arts Center. Uh, we're giving you the information uh, to get your tickets. Uh, you'll see that in our broadcast here. Uh, Trey Crowder, I can't wait to personally uh, meet you and see your show. And I uh, thank you very much for joining us on Queer News Tonight. Al, I'm honored to have been here, Al. I can't wait to meet you too. And thank you guys for having me. I'm looking forward to getting down there to sunny Southern Florida. Hey, y'all, it's Trey Crowder here. Listen up. On January 28th at 7 p.m., I'll be performing at the Sunshine Cathedral Center for the Performing Arts in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I don't know what we're going to talk about since Florida's been so chill and low-key lately, minding their own business, not making any waves or headlines or nothing. Now, I'm just kidding. Florida's been on one, so I'm looking forward to it. Go to sunshinecathedral.org and get your tickets now. By the way, I hear they are the largest progressive queer church around, which I feel like hearing the words progressive queer church together probably has a similar impact on people as hearing the words liberal redneck together. So I'm into it. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a fun time. I can't wait. January 28th, 7 p.m., sunshinecathedral.org. Love you. Bye. LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.